and from a lot of perspectives, um, uh, I already I've been doing politics for a long time. As we get ready to, to embark on this conversation about Ukraine, I'm fully aware. And, and brother uh, uh, Terrell, I know you're, you know, neck deep in it. You're in Kiev. So you're aware of all the geopolitical factors and you are aware of all the geopolitical factors as it pertains to the United States of America how it is, the, the, the politics here in the United States, how it pans out and how it's being used to control the narrative in one way or the other uh, as it pertains to Ukraine. Now, I said a whole lot, but I want to come all the way down to the very basics now and help our audience understand why someone in Atlanta or someone in Ferguson should even care about what's happening in Ukraine. Thank you very much. That's an excellent question. I'm often asked why black people ought to care. Listen, I'm, uh, I claim New York now. I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, the blackest city in the United States by population, right? And so, uh, you know, and, 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 um, and like, like uh, Dr. Mack, I went to a historically black college where I got my first opportunities to travel abroad at an HBCU. So listen, I'm a black person who grew up in blackness, who was educated in blackness. Um, at the same time, blackness to me and, glo- and having a global mind, those two don't run in conflict with one another that right. pertains to our own safety and security at home because they both go together. So let me explain the um, the politics. Of, you know, So why should they care? One, I'm going to give you a, a sneak peek to my podcast episode that's dropping this Friday that I had with a form, with, with former uh, U.S. ambassador to Russia, Michael McFaul. Uh, Putin mm. thinks very much in ethnic terms, right? And so in America, we look at Ukrainians, we look at Russians, we look at these Estonians and think, oh, okay, these are all just white people going at each other. But in reality, uh, that's kind of reductive and it's just false. For one, we would never say that all black people on the continent of Africa are alike, right? And so, right. you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're a continent of, you know, dozens of countries and, and, and listen, hundreds of even cases, thousands of ethnicities and languages. And so why is it important is that the way that Putin is operating in Ukraine, he is trying to uh, reestablish a settler, the, the settler colonial influence of the USSR, right? Because mm. Russia is a settler colonial state like the United States. Now jump into that um, in a minute. Russia and the United States are both settler colonial nations. Now, why should we care about Russia's settler colonialism while we're dealing with our own settler colonialism? Mm. It's very it's very simple, right? So, if you what's happening here right now is that with with, with Ukraine, there are more than one hundred thousand Russian troops at the border. So, I'm in Kiev right now. It's very quiet. I'm looking out my window. Everything is normal. If you didn't know that there was a conflict here, you wouldn't know it um, if you didn't read the uh, if you didn't watch the news. But this is an unprovoked attack, and what Putin genuinely believes is that his Regaining the, the 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 power of the former USSR is not going to happen because Ukrainians are a part of his Slavic Union. So he thinks very much in ethnic terms, and he feels like if these people, the Belarusians, the Ukrainians, and um, and there the Russians are not reunited, then that will be a failure on his part. Now, going back mm. to what McFaul told me last night during our conversation, he said during a meeting because he's had a number of meetings with Putin. He said that Putin was looking at him and Biden and, and some other, the, you know, the um, the top foreign policy people during Obama's era. He said, Putin said, you know what? And he looked at his skin. He did his skin just like he, Putin took his finger and he ran his finger across his face. He said, you know what's wrong with you, Americans? You all think that we think like you. Mm. You all think that we are the same. And what Putin was saying is that we're Slav. We're not white. And so he... Mm. So, so, so the thing about Ukraine, why it's important is that they treat, first of all, Ukrainians like second class citizens. And it's all written and inculcated in the way that he speaks about this nation, little brother. Um, and it's like little something that steps the Ukrainian down to a second throttle. And so the question is, as a, as, as a world power in the United States and as citizens, how much of this type of behavior from the mm. Kremlin do we want to how how best do we stop that diplomatically? Because yeah. if he has this ethnic outlook, because this whole thing is we're going to predicate an unprovoked attack against Ukraine. What how does that mean that they can't spread beyond Ukraine and maybe not militarily, but through cyber warfare or et cetera? So it could very much hit the United States because the context of how Putin is attacking Ukraine could also impact us in the United States. Mm. Mm. 
Brother Mack. And, and Brother Starr, just, just a few corrections. Is Although my heart and soul is HBCU, I actually graduated from PWI, Mississippi State University. But oh, I'm sorry. I got you. Yeah, no, yeah. no, not a, not a problem. I was raised in Jackson, so Jackson State is actually was my first choice. Yeah. I just didn't have an engineering program, I so I went there. But, but nonetheless, uh, back to your point of not only from those aspects of why should Black folks be concerned, but the question I would ask you is, and this to me is the most important question in, in or at least one of the important questions in, in addressing how is this going to affect everyday average black folks? What would happen if Russia were to invade Ukraine based on the the ideas that NATO has set forth, the Biden administration? So what would happen if you if Russia actually invaded yeah. Ukraine? And, and when I ask that question, I'm saying from an ally standpoint, everybody chooses sides. It's clear to me that China is going to side with Russia. I would think that, well, it's clear to me Germany would side with Russia. I believe China would side with Russia. And if you think about China from a population of 1.7 billion, having one of the greatest militaries in the world, technologically speaking, now everybody starts divvying up. Uh, uh, England comes here. France comes here, sides with the U.S. But basically, could we be looking at World War III? And if something like this happens and you have this major geopolitical world event taking place from a standpoint of how would this affect black folks trust and believe wall street would crash and wall street's going to crash because wall street is based on profits and if companies can no longer do business they're going to be layoffs and we all know from a historical perspective blacks have been the last hired and the first fired so That's trust right. and believe if Russia were to invade Ukraine, is it plausible that this scenario that I'm, I'm laying out to you, is that possible about who would side with Russia and what could be the possible worldwide mm. implications of it? Mm. OK, well, well, thank you very much, Dr. Mack. Well, first one, off for your point. Yes, China and Russia are um, geopolitical allies, but they are but they but they have a very complex relationship. Because over the years, because of Russia's unsta you know, unstable economy, They've had to get a lot of their loans from Beijing because a lot of the Western banks start stop lending um, Russia and some of the right. key oligarchs money, right? So that's from a function from a financial standpoint. You're correct, but the, but the relationship is kind of a, uh, you know, sometimes it's cat and mouse. Sometimes you know they're definitely in solidarity on the uh, U United Nations Security Council, right? Because they have the same uh, issues or problems with human rights, et cetera, right? But that's another story we can right. get into it if you ask me. Now, as far as how black people are impacted, gas prices. Gas prices are going to go up. And so, uh, and, and that's something that energy analysts have predicted that certainly would happen if there was an attack. One thing you have to keep in mind, too, is that there's a project here that's called Nord Stream 2 that sends yeah. about uh, roughly half of um, Europe in, in, and, um, in, and Germany's gas from Russia. And it's, as opposed to it coming from Ukraine, it's going to go through you know, like, you know, it's going to go, you know, through the, um, you know, under the, ba you know, south of the Baltics and going straight into Germany. Now, in regards to your question about NATO, uh, Ukraine is not a member of NATO. And so they would not trigger Article 5, which is if you attack one of us, you attack all of us. Mm -hmm. There has been no official statements of, of, of America or NATO countries sending troops to fight for Ukraine. In fact, mm -hmm. they would not do that. Uh, uh, so we don't have to worry about the troops happening. So what you're seeing with these deployment of soldiers is that because of those soldiers are going to NATO aligned countries. And so because of the borders here, right next to Ukraine is Poland to the West. And so because of that, that's just normal military procedure of making sure that your borders are secure in case any major conflict goes beyond Ukraine. So these deployments are not meant to suggest that American troops are going to fight. That's something that's not true. Now, a conversation that I've heard amongst progressive circles, and I saw and I saw the Progressive Caucus release a statement um, that was signed by Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and there is another Congresswoman from Washington, and her name evades me right now. Um, so I think the questions about why we should care is. Does America, as far as a progressive stance, do you have a moral responsibility to provide arms to 
a country that aspires to be a part of the EU, that aspires to be geopolitically aligned with you, arms to protect itself? That's the question. And so some people would say that those um, that they're offering a, of lethal weapons would escalate the situation. Well, the reality is that the Russians have been here for eight years, right? So Russia colonized Crimea, Luhansk, and the Donbass regions. And so the, the, so the escalation has already taken place. And so mm. I think the real question is, how should America, if you're thinking about it from a progressive standpoint, how should you morally respond without troops? And sanctions are a part of that. But I can I can go more into that um, if you ask me. I just yeah. want to stop. But, but, but brother Stark, what, what my question yeah, got, is: yeah. what, what would the U.S. do if Russia? Because as you stated, they have a hundred thousand troops sitting there. They're beginning to bring in the infrastructure that suggests strongly that there is going to be quote unquote an invasion. So if Russia were to go into Ukraine, what would be the U.S.'s response? Would it be with force? Would it be purely diplomatic? And if we responded with force, trust and believe, you know, I am of the mindset that the insides are going to be taken. And so that's mm. my question. What would what would the U.S. Oh, respond okay, to I guess, if yeah. Russia Sanctions. went into Ukraine? Thank you. Thank you very much. Sanctions. And so uh, America has made it clear to Ukraine that there would be no troop involvement. So that's not going to happen. What would happen is that you, is that NATO would supply lethal weapons so that Ukraine would defend itself. And so one of the main weapons that you probably see on television are these um, these shoulder propelled, um, you know, devices. And basically what those are are javelins. And so those are armor piercing um, weapons. And so one and, and that's a major issue that basically what you would use to fight. Uh, it's basically an mm. anti tank weapon. And so. So the, wow. the, the position from the United States is that and, and they're very deadly. I mean, if you see if all you have to do is Google javelins on um yeah. google yeah. javelins on, on on youtube and what you will see is that they're very mobile and then you can just shoot at a tank blow it up and then you can and then you can seek shelter so it's a very efficient tactical weapon and it and, 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 it, wow. and, and listen the russians don't want to see that and so that's the question they will provide arms not necessarily fight now going back to the sanctions uh there are two ways that the sanctions will be deployed one of the main things is that they would um America is thinking about sanctions towards Putin's inner circle, and there are roughly uh, Navalny had a list of roughly thirty plus people that he encouraged to be sanctioned. And the idea is, if these people's properties, if their banks, if their um, if, if, if their real estate interests were seized, then that would, after a while, because sanctions take a while to to, to hit, because Russia is functioning as an autocratic kleptocracy. Um, it would take a few years and they would and they would suppose to pressure Putin and say, hey, maybe going into Ukraine is a bad idea. The other option is is sanctioning banks, mm. larger banks. Here's a problem with, with sanctioning a uh, large banking system. If Russians cannot conduct business in U.S. dollars, then that's going to hurt the average Russian. And so what the administration is working through right now and talk to, to um, Ambassador McFarland and a few others about this, is thinking of a surgical way to apply sanctions so that they don't impact the Russian people. And them looking at this, uh, and Putin using this as an opportunity to say, hey, we're under siege, and the West not only wants me to suffer, they want you to suffer as well. 